Lotaragar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Orc Mode workout and today is Max Effort Bench Day. Max Effort Bench Day. I told you guys last week uh, when I was starting to do some singles again that I'd hit 315 today and I got 315 for a pause close grip and it was actually relatively easy, relatively fast. Everything went up clean. Obviously I'm still ramping there. I'm overall happy with my numbers. Have I lost a little bit of bench strength and some overhead press strength with all the cutting? Yes. Uh, but I feel like with the training on point, with me doing very, very slow cutting from here on out, uh, meaning as long as I'm under 200 by the end of this year, you know, being at 215-ish now, um, that's fine. Because I'm going to gain strength, right? We're going to gain strength, we're going to gain muscle, and it's going to be recomposition. Um, working on all these performance elements, conditioning. Um, I'm toying with actually filming some of my GPP tomorrow. People may or may not like it. I'll think about it. I might do it. Uh, I'll decide that probably in the morning at some point uh, if I feel like doing that or not because some people are curious what I'm actually doing with that. But obviously we're not going to film all the cardio because I, I do an hour of lists every day right now. But I am doing conditioning work and that's going to branch into other stuff. But there we go, that 315. Sorry, I got sidetrack i tend to do that i ramble during these uh, but i got the 315 and it was pretty easy um, also you guys will notice when i get over to the wider grip on the floor press yes i am going to start working my wider grip bench later because a lot of people you know they see my my pressing strength and they'll see my overhead pressing go why is your bench disproportionate sometimes because i only close grip and i've only close grip for so many years and even even when i was doing like 340 plus in meets back in the uk i was still close gripping um, I haven't wide gripped in a long time, and obviously, if I really practice the wide grip, wider grip, not even real wide, it's really moderate, medium grip, uh, you know, at least pinkies on the rings, I would probably have a much higher max, but I haven't been training it. So I think if I start working with it some, uh, start, starting with the floor press, that will, will get me there, and then we'll actually see that my bench is probably better than people think it is. Um, 205 press today. All right, after hitting my bench, I'm happy with that. I need to get it back up, but with all this cutting, that's going to take time. And always doing it as a secondary exercise behind a, a flat bench of some type, it may be a little bit difficult, um, but that's okay. We'll get it there. And I feel like all that, that speed work on the overhead press is going to help. And, you know, we'll see where we get it. But hey, if I could get my press back to 225 at a body weight of 200 or less, that's good in anybody's books. I mean, that's that's well beyond the world record in strength lifting, right? Hell, the lift I just hit just now would be a world record in strength lifting if I made weight. All right, if I made weight, if I did the 198, the 90 kilo, that would be a world record in that sport. You know, again, they, they have a pretty small competition field. Um, but I was happy with those lifts today. I feel like I've got my baselines established. These are my starting training matches uh, for calculating my, my other work off of, right? And I'll probably hit a max on a floor press next week. I will be rotating between two exercises on, on big lifts on the maxes. It's not going to be like people think of with conjugate where you rotate through six or seven or eight. Because uh, for raw lifters, I don't think that's really ideal. And you guys notice everything is still pretty much raw lifts, right? Even if we rotate a bit, we're not using really accommodating resistance. And if I do, it'll be speed work later. Um, Pull-ups went good. I mean, I hit what I hit last time. A 65 for a triple for a dead hang pull up on the final one and it was tough with my boots on that's the other thing this was leaving my my Tim's on so I can live with that particularly being a third exercise of the day after hitting those heavier things because we do need to get this this back work in and I like kind of the way this is set up right now with, with accessories like I have accessory movements that are big movements that I do on dynamic day and then ones I do on my max effort day and I like it that way I feel like it does let me train a couple different movement patterns uh, because the whole thing here is that we are trying to get all around strong. Yes, there is a specialty on the squat bench deadlift in the press, but we are trying to get all around strong. We are trying to get maximum muscular development and again, try, trying to get that thick orky look on top of it. Uh, so that's a, a big part of the training. Um, so yeah, I, I do need to be able to do my pull-ups. I just feel like training pull-ups all the time. I did notice my connective tissue can't really handle it. But what I will say there is that my biceps were throbbing. And I don't mean the connective tissue. I mean the actual muscle bellies. Uh, they could barely handle those pull-ups today. But, you know, I did all the sets of cheat curls yesterday, four sets on my, my squat and bench day. 
Uh, so maybe that's to be expected and that's okay. If my biceps are gonna be the limiting factor, that's fine. That's perfectly acceptable. I need bigger biceps anyways. Uh, I went ahead and instead of uh, ramping on the floor press, I just went straight to the 275. Cause I'm like, you know what? I'm feeling strong. My pressing strength was good today. Let's just hit it and try to do some triples, right? Uh, the first two triples went pretty good. The third set, I petered out. I, I couldn't get a third one. I stopped the second because I realized the second was pretty much a limit set. And I could almost feel it on this one. This third rep on this second set was a bit grindy, particularly coming off that dead stop at the bottom. You know, And you guys will notice that this is the wider grip. I have my pinkies on the rings. So, you know, we're, we're still not uh, the maximum for meat legal width. So I could go a hair, a hair wider if I wanted. But to me, it feels so awkward because I'm so used to close gripping that even to me, that feels ultra wide, even though actually I, I really have another three inches of width I could go on each side easily and still be technically meat legal wide. But it just feels so awkward. It's going to take some getting used to on this. But I think what we'll do this coming week, I think we're going to do max effort on the floor press and then we'll do back off triples with the close grip right so we're going to swap these so that means probably come friday i'm going to do speed work with the floor press to prepare myself for the max why because we're getting a bunch of first reps we're practicing getting that single in right we're training the motor pattern with the dynamic work it's one of the benefits of all those high volume low rep sets even when you're doing speed because you were treating each rep like a one rep max in terms of force production, you get that effect, right? We are practicing for if we're hitting the single. Uh, then I did my laterals and these, God, these left me burning. Uh, you guys will notice when I get to the final set, I pretty much hit failure on the 12th rep. It was kind of a sloppy rep on the, on the last one. Um, and what people need to know, yes, this is almost a fluff and pump exercise, but sort of not really. Uh, the main thing is that this, the kettlebell is awkward. We're swinging it out wide. Uh, it requires some core stabilization. But the other thing here is that you'll notice the way that I'm bent over, and I want to highlight that again. I'm bent over in such a way that we are getting more rear delt. Why? Because we're doing this for rear delts, side delts, and upper traps. Uh, this is to develop my shoulder girdle further uh, beyond everything that the, the, all the pressing is doing. And something like this is a, is a fantastic compliment to your standing press. Fantastic compliment. And again, one of the benefits I get out of the one arm is the core work. Because normally I would tell people one arm exercises, unless there's a real good reason to do it, they're not really a good idea. It's just not good training economy. But in this case, because it is getting that extra oblique work, this is an oblique exercise also. So again, people forget I'm not against small movements. I'm against senseless use of small movements. I'm against people thinking that they need to do three small movements for one damn body part. If you do that, I'm sorry, you're a damn moron who doesn't understand physiology. And that's, that's reality. Or you're trying to sell something. You're someone who does understand physiology, like certain researchers I won't name, who are trying to sell their books. But that's a bullshit artist. Small movements like this are working like four different big muscles or smaller muscles, right? I'm doing this for four different muscles even though a lot of people would classify it as a small movement. And it has a lot of mileage. You get a lot of mileage out of something like this. It takes three minutes. Three minutes at the end of a big workout, right? A couple minutes between the sets, obviously. So, I mean, you're talking about what? This is going to add, you know, two, three minutes between sets, one minute a set. So maybe 10 minutes but it pays big dividends and it's at the end of a really brutal hard workout. In fact, these, these heavy sessions actually take longer than my dynamic days. All right, my dynamic effort workouts, even with all those sets and even with the extra stuff added in, just over an hour. Because there's almost no breaks between the sets. It's just fast, fast, fast. All this heavy stuff, this, this workout took me an hour and a half, at least. Uh, because you have to recover between all the heavy lifts. You have to. So even though there's way less work done, the, the workload density is very, very, very low uh, because that's just what's required. So this at the end really is, is minimal. I spent less time on this than I did probably on the last two sets of the floor press. 
All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.